the back rooms, reach for the stars. Phenomenon number six, the Nibiru Cataclysm. The Nibiru Cataclysm is a supposed disastrous encounter between Earth and a large planetary object, either a constellation or a near miss, that certain groups believe would take place in the early 21st century. Believers in this doomsday event usually refer to this object as Nibiru, or Planet X. From Wikipedia Blip 00 Log Report Level 78 Preface. January 28th, 2022. Critical alert received. Dr. Mateen. Hawkins, you might want to look at this. Dr. Hawkins. Give me a second. Is it about Blip 03? Note. Blip 03 refers to the room of level 78. Ad Astra. Dr. Mateen. Close. I'm reading unusual electromagnetic waves from Blip 00 similar to those emitted by Blip-03. I suspect a similar incident to the catastrophe in Level 78 will occur shortly. Dr. Hawkins. What is there to destroy, though? The latter Blip already wiped out nearly all of the habitable space in Level 78. There's nothing really left to engulf except some surrounding stars. Dr. Mateen. I'm not sure. But what I can tell you is that these Blips are thirsty for destruction. They need... Sustenance, for lack of a better term. And when they run out... Note from Dr. Hawkins. Level 5, level 11, and level 56 might experience some anomalous occurrences within the next year. Possibly due to their connection with level 78. At best, these incidents may be minor nuisances like radio waves. But at worst, they may be full-on apocalypses... This must be urgently addressed before some cataclysm takes us by surprise. Section 1. Introduction and Background The Nibiru Cataclysm is a hypothetical event, theorized to cause tremendous fractures in space-time should it ever occur, ripping apart the very fabric of reality. The process of the Nibiru Cataclysm generally begins with the supposed death of Blip-00, codenamed Nibiru in level 78. Once all of Nibiru's energy has been consumed, it will explode, similar in scale to a supernova. However, unlike typical supernovas in the front rooms, that usually happens thousands if not millions of light years away from Earth, Nibiru is ominously close to the destroyed remains of level 78 space station. That gives it easy access to the levels that connect directly to level 78, such as level 5, level 11, and level 56. Image Caption Figure 1 The Meg's highest quality image of Blip 00. Note its uncanny resemblance to an eye. While the concept of level traversing has not been fully understood, it is widely believed that two levels with a common entrance or exit will generally be right next to each other on the fabric of space-time. For example, this means that level 11's environment is quote-unquote physically next to level 78's environment. For the most part, this distinction has no relevance to the average wanderer. However, to the blips of level 78, this makes all the difference. It is precisely what allows the destructive Null-06 to continue its vindictive streak. By entering the blips, which double as quote-unquote portals to different realms, other, other levels of the backrooms, Null-06 can effectively consume entire areas in a fraction of a second. This information forms the basis of the theory describing the Nibiru Cataclysm. When a blip dies, its respective quote-unquote portal destabilizes, resulting in two separate realms conjoining. However, since a single blip can act as a portal to multiple levels, this is not simply a matter of two levels combining. It is a matter of several hundred levels combining all at once. According to level 78 researcher Dr. Mateen, this event would be akin to Imagining Level 11's tallest skyscraper puncturing through the heat of the Cygnus Archive, with imperfect ge geometric shapes from Level 404 terrorizing the bookshelves. The hypothesis of this phenomenon exists as Level 38, which was discovered shortly after the formation of the blips, 
and was likely born from the aforementioned event. Level 38's complete proliferation of disorder makes it nearly impossible to discern which parts are unique aspects of the level and which aspects came from other levels. Marked by sheer instability and confusing geometry, this amalgamation of approximately 40 different levels proves to be a nightmare for the brain to comprehend. Wanderers and levels affected by the Nibiru Cataclysm tend to experience dehabilitating migraines caused by overworking the brain while trying to comprehend the landscape. In rare cases, this can result in fatalities. Approximately 20 lives have been lost to brain shutdowns. Footnote. No interior or exterior injuries were found, not even an aneurysm. These people literally dropped dead spontaneously. And nothing against time's scythe can make defense save breed. To brave him when he takes thee hence. Section 2. The Death of Nibiru. Blips, formerly believed to simply be anomalies in space-time created by Null-06, were discovered to have sentience after the sounds created by Ad Astra's microwaves were deciphered as Morse code. These waves appear to be a form of communication between blips, though they are also coincidentally understandable by humans. When Nibiru started sending waves in early 2022, researchers decoded its message roughly as, Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. This uttered phrase from the Bhagavad Gita serves as a double meaning in the context of Blip 00, researchers believe. A leading theory is that Nibiru is foreshadowing its destructive potential after the quick evisceration of Level 78 space station by its sibling Blip. However, more apocalyptic prophets have predicted that Nibiru is close to death, which would release all of its energy simultaneously in a single blast. Pointing to recent observations of Nibiru fluctuating in brightness, Proponents of this theory believe that it is rapidly depleting more energy than it can consume. With nearly half the level already annihilated by Ad Astra, Nibiru now relies on destroying remains of small stars to quell its ever-growing hunger. Footnote. This is obviously temporary, as there are only a finite number of stars in level 78. When there are no more stars to consume, Nibiru should travel to other levels and consume them. However, this is just a theory. Should Nibiru die, the first event that will happen is gravitational collapse. All of the matter surrounding Nibiru will be rapidly pulled into the center, nicknamed the Eye. From there, an expansion outward will commence at speeds rivaling that of light, sending the contents of Nibiru flying through space and the quote-unquote barriers that separate levels from each other. In the aftermath, Nothing but a ring of dust and a glowing orb is to remain of Nibiru. Image Caption Figure 2 A rough model of the events that will transpire when Nibiru dies. However, the effects of Nibiru's death will not simply be isolated to level 78 as once thought. By destroying the quote-unquote barriers between levels, the Nibiru Cataclysm opens up prime opportunities for spontaneous snow-clipping incidents, stranger architectural conglomerations, and even unnatural entity hybrids. These three key aspects are already heavily present in the highly unsafe Level 38, and the death of Nibiru will only expand the number of levels that succumb to Level 38's quote-unquote fold-point physics. Section 3. Measurement of Threat Level as of now, based on current observations of Nibiru, there is no perceived threat to levels that are connected to level 78. The possibility of Nibiru dying this early when no other blip shows any signs of impending death is estimated to be around 10%. This information, however, is subject to change. Edit. Possibility raised to 70%. Footnote. What the hell even happened? Did we suddenly just flip a switch in it or something? One day it's all completely normal. The next day level 78 looks like it's undergoing its own version of the big crunch. And of course, it's that damn eye-shaped celestial body. That eye sees everything. I swear that thing's watching me. Researcher Huskins. See research report 078 number 092 for details. If the apocalypse has already occurred by the time you're reading this, 
Skip to section 5 for next steps. Addendum. Research Report 078, number 063. Date of Report 02-27-2022. Subject. Blip 00. Status. Relatively stable. Change in mass since last report. Minus 1 times 10 to the power of 30 kilograms. Change in radius since last report. Minus 50,000 kilometers. Current mass. 4.8 times 10 to the power of 31 kilograms. Current radius. 1,540,000 kilometers. Other notes. Nibiru has increased in brightness since last month's report despite its reduction in mass and radius. This seems to imply that Nibiru is using up more energy than initially speculated. This will likely accelerate its decline in the near future. But for now, this should not be of any concern. The increased consumption of energy is quite minuscule. At most, this will reduce its lifespan by approximately 200 years, which is completely trivial when compared to Nibiru's projected lifespan of 9,375,000,000 years. Our species will be dead by then. There's nothing to worry about. Addendum. Blip 00's Morse code signals. Preface. These were sent over a five-month period from 02-01-2022 to 07-01-2022. Translation, Nevermore. Translation, Malicious Eye. Translation, then space began to toll. Translation, we are watching. Translation, Apocalypse. Translation, Cataclysm. Addendum, Research Report 078, Number 092. Date of Report, 08-03-2022. Subject, Blip zero zero. Status. Highly unstable. Change in mass since last report. Plus 3.0 times 10 to the power of 31 kilograms. Change in radius since last report. Minus 1,200,000 kilometers. Current mass. 9.7 times 10 to the power of 31 kilograms. Current radius. 87,000 kilometers. Other notes. Nibiru's gravitational pull is skyrocketing. Unfortunate stars coming even within several million kilometers of Nibiru will get engulfed in the blink of an eye. Special eyewear is now required to observe Nibiru, as its brightness will now also render anyone permanently blind. Furthermore, Distortion of space-time has been observed wreaking havoc in the surrounding area. Stars are colliding every few seconds, causing massive explosions and forming ab abnormal gas formations non-existent in our reality. Addendum. Level 11 Incident Report. Meg Incident Report. 09-02-2022. The Meg has recently been alerted to occurrences of clicking noises around Level 11. 
the mechanisms by which these noises occur are similar to that of the blips in level 78. Though a link is suspected, it cannot be confirmed as of yet. These noises strike unusually when a wanderer's senses are relaxed. That is, when a wanderer is in a state of peace and quiet. Whether the sounds only occur in areas of silence, or if they are simply more perceivable in silence, is unknown at this time. The latter is more widely believed, due to the odd tendency of the sound to increase in volume the longer a wanderer's senses remain unstimulated. The source of the noise cannot be definitively identified. It seems to propagate in all directions, being everywhere all at once. It is not any quieter indoors than it is outdoors. It is a constant auditory assault from which there is no escape. It has transcended its original label of minor inconvenience, and has been grouped with a never-aiding tinnitus. The Meg has conducted several interviews with some victims of this occurrence. For the sake of brevity, the full transcripts will not be posted here. And, however, some notable quotes will be provided below for reference. You ever heard of keyboard ASMR? It's basically that. Except instead of soothing you, it makes you want to rip your ears off. Imagine listening to tap dancing 24-7. Try living your whole life like that. It feels like there's an analog clock stuck in my brain, ticking down to who knows what. Gosh, if only I could get rid of it. As of now, residing in level 11 is not recommended. Temporary camps have been established in level 1 to help displaced wanderers. Meg, helping humanity. Addendum, level 56 incident report. Meg incident report. 10 slash 14 slash 2022. Level 56's novel singularity room has started to engage in uncharacteristic behavior, with its vacuum chamber now having a suction force. Ice is being sucked into the hole without any indication of where it might land. With all this matter being consumed, the level might soon be destroyed. According to witnesses, this caused a violent shaking in the level rivaling that of even the strongest earthquakes. As a result, the Meg has immediately evacuated all their research bases in the level due to the cave's instability. Though falling stalactites have injured many Meg operatives, with the most severe injuries requiring the amputation of several limbs, there were no reported fatalities. Evacuees reported a consistent clicking noise, similar to those in level 11. The circumstances of this noise remain almost entirely the same as the noises in level 11, but there is an added effect of an echo due to the level's massive cave structure. However, this time, the Meg has a general idea of where the sound could be coming from. It seems to originate from the singularity itself. Look, I know it sounds unorthodox and everything, just trust me on this. I think we can all agree that areas close to the singularity have a climate co comparable to that of outer space. There's been a lot of research done on this, so I won't delve into the details. So my theory is this. What if the climate is like outer space because the core of the level itself is a gateway to outer space? We've already established the existence of an entry to level 78 through level 56 and that singularity does have some characteristics to the vacuum of space. Katie, what was our last reading of the core's temperature? Approximately 2.3 Kelvin. The core's pressure? Off the top of my head, I'd say about 80 nanopascals. Does this not sound like outer space to you? Our measurements are consistent with this theory. I think this level is connected to level 78 in more ways than just an entrance. If anything odd is going on in level 78, I think we'll be able to formulate some more explanations as to why all these occurrences are going on here. Meg, helping humanity. Time does go on. I tell it gay to those who suffer now. They shall survive. There is a sun. They don't believe it now. Section 4. Connection to other incidents. Though it has been largely hypothesized, that Object 95's doomsday prophecy pertains to the Nibiru Cataclysm, there has been little evidence to support any explicit connections besides the shared threat of an impending apocalyptic scenario. 
However, the simultaneous occurrence of these two incidents cannot be solely attributed to coincidence. Specific events speculated to take place during the rapture include, but are not limited to, a violent storm on the terrain of level 10, perpetuated by its universally cloudy environment, a complete blackout on the streets of level 11 due to the complete disappearance of the sun, and the outright evisceration of levels from existence and from memory. The third point holds a solid amount of significance to conspiracy theorists, primarily because Null-06 is not only known to be capable of destroying levels, it is known to have already destroyed several levels. However, researchers have never been able to identify which levels have been destroyed, serving as evidence that when Null-06 destroys a level, every wanderer's memory of it subsequently disappears. What would happen in any given level upon Nibiru's death is a complete mystery. Some levels will be impervious to the effects, but most will experience at least one side effect. The worst case scenario is the creation of a rip in space-time, generally seen as a small two-dimensional tear that leads into nothingness or a completely different area. If enough space-time rips are created, a fold point situation not dissimilar to level 38 is very likely to occur, with several foreign level environments entering the home level at once. The main property of quote-unquote fold points is the inability for the brain to identify any singular object in them. Everything seems familiar enough to possibly exist in our current reality, but there's always something off about its patterns that our brains are unable to recognize. The Nibiru Cataclysm, therefore, will plunge us into realms beyond our understanding by transforming once habitable areas into unidentifiable frontiers. With it comes that ubiquitous feeling of being watched. Nibiru's influence strikes when wanderers are relaxed and not paying attention. This has been observed with the clicking noises, and researchers believe that Nibiru's all-seeing, quote-unquote, eye also watches those who do not watch it. This is a near-universal sign that the level one currently resides in will be consumed, as it is a sign that a rip in space-time has occurred. At any point in time, a destructive being, such as Null-06, could clip through these rips in space-time, engulfing the entire level and all of its inhabitants. Section 5. In the Event of an Apocalypse The Level 78 research team has compiled a few key points to help increase the chances of survival should this event occur. If you feel like you are being watched, you probably are. Evacuate immediately. An unavoidable storm is rapidly approaching your location, and you don't want to risk being in the vicinity when it eventually hits. Do not look up at the sky. If you see an orb glowing blood red, it is already too late. The cataclysm will commence shortly. Find the nearest exit. Do not go through any exits that are not logged in the general public database. These are likely rips in space-time newly created after Nibiru's death. Unfortunately, the infrastructure required to run the database may eventually be compromised in the future by this event. Take in all the information you can before total shutdown. If you ever encounter a fold point, close your eyes. Do not allow your brain to process anything. Even the mere thought of what a fold point looks like is enough to send your mind down a spiraling rabbit hole. You'll never truly know when you've escaped, so just keep your eyes shut. Ignore everything before this point and just live life normally. We'll all die anyway. Why spend your final moments worrying? Is it time? Devouring time, blunt though the lion's paws, and make the earth devour her own street blood. Pluck the knee teeth from the fierce tiger's jaws, and burn the long-lived phoenix in her blood. Image caption. The dawn is coming. The eye sees you all. The eye taunts you all. The eye consumes you all. The eye does not die. The eye is only reborn. The eye always exists. Time and space, war and peace, free will and determinism. Nothing matters. Creation follows destruction. Destruction follows creation. The nightmare is approaching. The apocalypse is happening. 
The cataclysm is intensifying. I am eternal. <laughs>